Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we will look at how to implement supervised machine learning algorithms such as decision trees and k nearest neighbors on the IRIS dataset. Supervised machine learning methods are used to train the model when we have labeled data. Now, if you want to know more about machine learning, you can check out my video on this topic. Or if you want to know how to perform unsupervised machine learning algorithms such as k-means clustering on the IRIS dataset, you can check out my next video on this topic. I'll add a link to these videos in the description below. Before moving forward, it would be highly appreciated if you could hit the like button, smash that subscribe button and turn on bell notification to stay updated. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So what we're doing here is we are importing pandas for basic data operations. We are importing matplotlib and seaborn for plotting the data. We're importing train test split from sklearn and model selection to split the data into training and testing data. Then we are importing decision tree to load the decision tree classifier and plot tree to plot the decision tree. Then we are importing accuracy score, confusion matrix and classification report to measure the accuracy of the model. And then we are importing k nearest neighbors to load the knn classifier. Now that we have imported the libraries, let's import the data from sklearn. So from sklearn dot datasets, we are going to import the iris data. Now let's load the data. Now to see the available description of the data set, we can print its description. So let's print it. And as we can see, we have the description of the iris data set. The next step is to convert this into a pandas data frame. So let's load the data to convert it into pandas data frame. And let's add the column names. Now let's view the data frame using the head function. Remember that we are implementing a supervised learning algorithm. So we need to add the target variable. Let's go ahead and add the target variable. And let's view the data using the head function again. From the description, we understood that there are three classes for the data set. To see the different classes in the target column, we can use the unique method. Now that we have the unique classes in the target column, but which species do they represent? To find that, let's print the target name of the data. So now we have an idea of what each of these classes represent. To find the size of the data set, we can use the shape attribute. So df.shape and this will give the size of a data set. Now let's use the info function to get some more information regarding the data set. So df.info and as we can see, this gives us the column names along with the number of non-null values and the data type. Now we can see that there are no null values in the data set by looking at the info function. However, if you want to check for null values explicitly, we can use the isNullSum function. So to do that, we can type in df.isNull.sum. Now to view the statistical details of a data set, we can use a describe method. So df.isNull.sum describe 
and this will return the count min max mean and standard deviation of a data from the data set description we understood that there are 50 instances of each species of the flower but to get this information from the data set we can use the value count method Now this returns as a count of each species in a data set. Now let's visualize the data using a pair plot. So to do that I'm using Seaborn's library, Seaborn's pair plot and I'm passing in the data frame. Now I'm setting the hue as species to represent each species with a different color. And then I'm setting the markers, markers as plus. And then I'm setting a color palette. Now from this we can see that the petal length and the petal width seems to be highly correlated. Speaking of correlation, we can also use a heat map to find the correlation between the different attributes. So let's see how to see the correlation using heat map, I'm setting the figure size. Save once heat map. Now df.core will give the correlated table and I'm setting the annotation equal to true. Now I'm setting the annotation equal to true to see the correlated values inside the heat map. So from the following heat map, we can see that the petal width has a high correlation with petal length and the target variable. If you want more detailed explanation about creating and customizing heat maps using C bonds, you can check out my video on this topic. I'll add a link to it in the description as well. Now we can also visualize the data points using a scatter plot. So df dot plot and let's say the kind of plot as scatter with the x value being the sepal length and the y value is the sepal width. Now this gives us a simple scatter plot showing all the classes together. Now if we want to create a scatter plot showing the different classes separately, we can do that also. So here we are creating a scatter plot for each individual species and then we are plotting it all together into one single plot and for a species 0 we are setting orange color, for species 1 we are setting blue color, for species 2 we are setting green color. Now let's set the x label, y label and the title. And now we have a scatter plot with the different classes. Now if we want to visualize the distribution of the numeric data in the data set, we can do that by creating a widening plot. So let's create a widening plot for the sepal length. 
c bonds dot viren plot so from this we can get an idea of the numeric distribution of the data the thinner parts corresponds to less density areas whereas the thicker parts corresponds to a higher density now let's create a viren plot for the different attributes using subplots So what we are doing here is we are setting a 2 by 2 grid and we are plotting the different violent plots in the 2 by 2 grid. So 2 comma 2 comma 1 indicates the first space in the 2 by 2 grid and 2 by 2 comma 2 comma 4 indicates the fourth position in the 2 by 2 grid. So there we have our four plots and this is the 2 by 2 grid. This is the first graph, the second graph, the third and the fourth graph. So now let's go ahead and split the data for model building and testing. So first let's split the data into X and Y. So we are dropping the species column for the X data. And we are specifying axis equal to 1 to indicate it's a column. And now let's add the species column into the Y data. Now let's create a training and testing set. So I am taking a test size of 20 percentage here. Now let's print the size of training and testing set. Now let's train our model using a decision tree classifier. So first we'll add load the classifier. Now let's fit the training data on the classifier. Now let's predict the data on the given test data. Now let's calculate the accuracy of the model. And last let's print the accuracy of the model. And as we can see we have a test accuracy of 100%. Now let's put in the classification report. Let's also put in the confusion metrics for the model. Now as we can see all the data points are classified correctly. We can also visualize the decision tree classification by plotting a decision tree. Let's see how to do that. So first let's set the figure size. So here we are plotting a decision tree and our feature names will be the feature names of our iris data and our class names will be the target names of our iris data.
Now let's see what happens when we set the fill to false or when we remove filled. Now that we have trained the model using decision tree classifier, let's train the model using a k nearest neighbor classifier. k nearest neighbor with number of neighbors as 3. So this looks for 3 neighbors before putting the data into a class. Now let's fit the data. Now let's make the model predict for given test data. Now let's calculate the model accuracy. Now let's print the model accuracy. So this model also gives 100% accuracy. Now let's put in the confusion matrix. And as we can see, all the data points are being correctly classified by both the machine learning models. So let's do one thing. Let's give the models a new data and see how will it predicts the species for the given data. So I'm just loading the data frame just for a reference. Now let's create a simple data. We'll be adding the data as a dictionary. To add the keys, I'm just going to type in dot column so I can get the column names. Now let's set an index for this data. Now let's put it in the pandas data frame. And let's see the new data frame. And there we have a new data. Now let's predict to which class this data belongs to. So ideally, this should be predicted as class zero, that is Setosa. So I'm using decision tree to predict the new data. And let's print it. And as we can see, it predicts a class accurately. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you got an idea on how to implement decision tree and k nearest algorithms on the given dataset. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.